Tonight, Republicans at their national convention will rally around former President Donald Trump. Here's a live look for you now. Inside the convention hall in Milwaukee, Donald Trump is set to deliver his speech accepting his party's nomination for a third presidential time. Political reporter Jack Fink is here. Uh, and Jack, what exactly are you going to be listening for tonight, you think? Well, Ken, former President Trump has said he rewrote parts of his acceptance speech after the assassination attempt with the goal of uniting the country. So I'll be looking to see what he has to say about his near-death experience and how he hopes to unite the country. The shooting in front of a crowd and for all to see on TV, computers and phones, and how he responded to it by lifting his arm in the air in defiance, telling people to fight, has certainly galvanized Republicans both at the convention hall and across the country. Delegates to the Republican National Convention from North Texas have told me because of that moment, they feel even more inspired now to stand up, go to the polls in November, and vote for Trump. Even after that moment, delegates gave Trump a rousing standing ovation Monday night, the first night of the event, when he walked into the arena for the first time since the shooting. The inspiring thing was when he put that fist up and he was like, I'm going to fight. I may be down coming up off the ground he like like a fighter getting knocked down, but I'm going to get back up and I'm going to continue to fight for the great United States of America. And so I'm inspired to continue to fight with him like never before. Trump's speech tonight comes after his vice presidential nominee, Ohio Senator J.D. Vance, accepted the nomination last night. He made a direct pitch to working class voters in the key battleground states of Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, considered by the Biden-Harris campaign as their blue wall, their clearest way to victory. But the real clear politics average of polls right now show Trump is expanding his lead in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and in Michigan. But that state is still very, very close. Trump has also now taken a very tiny lead in Virginia, a state that Democrats have traditionally won. Yeah, all eyes on that. Uh, let's talk about President Biden now, if we could, for a bit here, Jack. We know the president remains in Delaware after he tested positive yesterday for COVID. That's according to the White House. Uh, his doctors say that the president continues to experience mild symptoms and he's taking Paxlovid. Meanwhile, Jack, there's a report out that the president could possibly decide to step aside and not run for re-election, uh, and that could be made public as early as this weekend. What do you know about that potential move? Well, that report, Ken, came from Axios, and they say several top Democrats have told them that the continuing pressure on the president to leave the race is having an impact and that, as you said, he may drop out as early as this weekend. Now, Democratic Party leaders reportedly told the president they don't believe he can beat Trump again, and they worry that Democrats will lose the Senate and not be able to regain the House. Now, these conversations started to increase this week after the assassination attempt on Trump. Now, one Democrat I spoke with locally said that if President Biden does change his mind and decides not to run, there could be two women on the ticket, Kamala Harris at the top and Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer as her vice presidential nominee. And one other thing I can tell you just in the last hour that CBS News Major Garrett has reported that this whole question about President Biden and whether he stays in the race could be resolved in the next three to five days. But as always, it's up to the president to make that decision. Can